All right, so just going through real quickly here on how to use uh, the rollable tables for Roll20 and utilizing it as a threat tracker. Uh, most commonly you'll see this in games like Apocalypse World, but a lot of people like to use uh, that MCing style, that GMing style in other systems. So you can of course use this uh, for anything. So I've uh, gone through and made uh, a few trackers that you can use that are a little bit more generic. Uh, so they don't have any words on them, and so they're multilingual in that sense, but uh, also for most settings. Uh, there's two variations. Uh, I originally made them so that they weren't rollable tables that you could uh, drag and drop the uh, different levels of threat um, or progress onto them. So that's what all this left side is. Uh, so I made two backgrounds, and then you can see the different progressions that they're making versus right here this is an actual rollable table so you can just right click on it multi-sided choose side and you can choose how far the thread has progressed um, so it's a little bit easier in that regard and you can just uh, pick as far along on it really quickly instead of having to drag and drop um, same thing for the circle version uh, this one is the same thing this is a four tick circle and so you can pick uh, how many ticks uh, you want to advance it on. So pretty simple, but I'm going to show how to make that. Uh, and uh, you can pretty much ignore this. I might explore this, but I made kind of a background so that you could write the label in up here using you know the Roll20 text um, and just have something written up there. Uh, and then you could actually fill in what caused each of the ticks if you wanted to track it that much. So I was considering making one of these for a six tick and an eight, click cl eight tick clock as well. But um, I don't know that I'm going to do that. Uh, anyways, uh, with the tokens, you can make a label down here. But as you can see, comparison and size, that's pretty small, especially if you're making bigger ones or you zoom out really far, which I don't know why you'd ever zoom out that far if you're just looking at trackers, but you might. Uh, regardless, uh, I made also just a simple thing, but I mean, you can get something like this anywhere and not even need this by choosing the color uh, of the text to be different so that it's showable on whatever background. But this way you don't have to worry about the background uh, for it. Uh, anyways, so I've already done this for the four tick. I actually haven't done the others. Uh, I'll have, uh, I'll share a link uh, for where these are uh, I should have thought about doing that for this uh, stream, but I'm planning on doing it on YouTube. So uh, there'll be links down below here. And uh, once you've downloaded those, you'll have a folder which has them. You know, pretty easy. And if you're already familiar with uh, Roll20, it shouldn't be that hard to upload into your library. Okay, so all I did was from the chat window, you go over to your art library. Uh, you need to be either the creator of the game or a GM in the game, of course, to be able to access this. And then uh, you'll see all the stuff that you've already uploaded uh, verse in your library versus, you know, your premium assets or what have you. Uh, so you just have to click upload. You can see the ones I already have. Uh, so I can go over here and I'm going to upload the uh, six clock because I've not done that. Oh, actually, no, I have already uploaded all of them, but it's pretty fairly simple. You just go to choose file uh, to find it, or if you already have the window open, you can just take one of the images, drag, and drop it. Uh, I've already done these, so I don't know what I'm going to. Oh, whatever. Okay, and you'll see the progress, and then it'll tell you your file is uploaded, and you see it up there. If you upload something on accident, you can just click on it and then select here right click, delete selected. Uh, so I've obviously got too many, so that's what I'm doing. All right, so now you've got the images uploaded that you need, so you wanna keep that window up here, uh, switch it over to the list, which is your collection. Uh, from here, you'll see macros that you've made, uh, decks that you might have, and then rollable tables. So this is where I already have uh, these two made that you can see. And so if you click on token, It'll make one pop out and appear, and you can resize it to whatever size you want. Uh, these default are sized for like a four by four, but you can easily make it bigger, and it works uh, right out the back, right out the bat. Uh, and then you can just do it like that, and it'll update. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So to make a new one, you click Add, 
click on it, the title of it, which is new table, change it. So in this case, we're going to make a six tick clock. Uh, players cannot roll from it. You can make uh, a version that's rollable for the players, but since the GM's usually in control of these clocks, uh, just leaving it so that uh, players do not are not able to roll from the table. Um, of course, also token control can enable or disable that as well. So once you've named it, add an item, okay, and you'll get this little pop up here. So you can name it. Uh, we're making a six tick clock, so I'm going to put uh, zero of six. Now you could just name it six, for example, or zero. You don't need of six, but I do that because that's how I do it. Uh, go back to your tab where you've got the images uploaded to. Okay, so I'm going to go to the countdown clock. So right now we're at zero of six, so I'll just drag and drop and then save changes. Uh, you don't need to worry about the weight thing because that's if you were actually making a random table for rolling. We're not actually making it for rollability. We're making it uh, specifically for uh, being able to just choose what we want on it. Okay, so then go over here, pick the one of six, save changes. And so we'll just keep doing this, 206, drag it over, save, three of six, drag it over, save, four of six, if I can type. And of course you can do this for anything, not just for this, but if you have other tokens that uh, are sized the same, they're designed to do this, or uh, whatever use you might have for, but this is uh, specifically designed for when you have images of the same size that are made to possibly go in a sequence, all right? And then we've got the last one, which is six of six, uh, which is right here. And save those changes, everything's in there. So save changes. And now when you go back to your collection, you've got the six tick clock. So I just have to click on token and it's gonna pop out here. It's immediately usable. Stretch it out to whatever size you want. And then multi-sided, choose side, and you can go from one to six and end up getting how many ever ticks you need filled out. Now you can label it, uh, double clicking on it brings this up so you can click on show nameplate and label it um, finishing this video. Uh, and you don't want anybody else to control it. If you did want a player to control it, that's where you could go here and select from uh, players' names. Advanced, you'll want permission for them to see the name if you want them to see the label. So don't forget that part right there. Just clicking on nameplate, you gotta actually, players can see that name. And then save changes, and now that will be viewable. Now again, the problem is if you have a lot of these and you're zoomed out, that label can get kind of small. So that's where I like to have this, right? And then I can just put text over it. Uh, and of course, in your uploads, you can just drag and drop if you have a simple label, okay? And then drag it to as long as you need it, or if you want it bigger, right? You can just size it to whatever your needs are for that. And go over here to uh, your draw shape, but instead you're gonna do text, pick the color you want, and Finishing this video, All right? And just put it there. Looks like I'm not long enough, so I'll do that real quick and plop it, and you're good to go. So now you've got a rollable table. You can quickly track threats or progress that the players are making in game, uh, depending on what it is. Um, so you can do this. This is for the sixth turn tracker. Uh, we can do this again for the 8-1, but it's going to be the exact same process. You're just going to have two more things on that rollable table. And uh, yeah, I'm, that's pretty much it. It's simple. Uh, this one, I designed it so it already has the label in the image. So each image already has that when you scroll through it. Uh, for this one, since it was circular, I wanted it to be more flexible. I didn't do that. So you have that option, like I said, by doing this or creating the actual label on the token itself. I don't know if people are really interested in this, it's not that hard to make, but um, I can obviously make this for the six and eight tick. Uh, I was actually gonna split it so that uh, the, it'd be like this on the right side and then the left side would have four, five, six, and then it would go all the way to eight, obviously for the eight tick clock. 
Uh, but you can see this is just a simple background that you can resize. Uh, you can lengthen it out if you want it, and it just fits there. So if you actually needed it to be longer for whatever reason, you could just you know stretch it. It might look a little bit odd there, but it has its uses. Um, so all these files that you see on this page are accessible. Uh, even this, let me show you how this one works real quick. Uh, not GM, uh, map token. So you can just you know drag one of these. So what I do is I usually control C, copy it, click where I want it to go, control V, and then it's sized to fit perfectly in the grid. So this is a nine by two grid size. Uh, when you first drop it from over here, it'll probably be on one. Actually, I think this one does it correctly, but anyways, you can stretch it out. You can even stretch it super long if you wanted, but it is uh, designed for too wide for these little ticks. And so you can just drag it over like that, delete it if it goes away. Uh, but again, the tokens uh, rollable table makes it a lot easier. You just right click multi-sided, bam. All right, we're down to just one tick. Makes it real simple, real fast, real easy. So that's how to make the countdown progression threat trackers for Roll20. Uh, you, there's actually other people who have made stuff like this too. Uh, I just made this one recently. Mainly I was, I'm in a sprawl game and so I made a version of this. Uh, doesn't look like this. It actually looks like the sprawl countdown clock and stuff. And I made that for use in the game that I was doing. And then I thought, hey, I'll make a generic one uh, that's a little bit more universal. And that's what you see here. So enjoy, and hopefully that helps you put it all together.